friends and colleagues, members of the College of Worcester community, welcome to this memorial concert to celebrate the life of Molly Bennett. I wish to add a warm welcome to Molly's family, to Jim and Elaine and Tess, who have traveled down from New York to be with us this afternoon. Please take time to greet them at the reception that will follow. We come with many tangled emotions this afternoon. If a butterfly seeking the nectar of a tropical flower contributes to the creation of a hurricane, how much more consequential is each life that crosses our path? This afternoon, we gather to be in the company of others who also struggle with the human experience of having our world torn apart, of hearing silence when there should be a song, of the laughter that mingles with tears as we recall gestures, conversations, and experiences, and of simply trying to grasp the proximity of life and death and life that continues even when nothing will ever be the same. The College of Worcester is known to be a community by our students, the employees, our families, and alumni. And while we do very many things quite well, I'm convinced that one of the things that makes us unique is our capacity to come together in times of great celebration and profound loss. So I invite you all to bring your whole selves into this place, to join the musical groups and our speakers as we reflect on the deep value of Molly's life in our community and in our own lives. For each of us wrestles with mortality, loss, and transcendence in different ways. And so I ask you to engage with respect the multiple ways that we each walk through times like these. With deep gratitude to Lisa Wong and the chorus, to Peg Cornwall and Grit Hertzman, to Laura Silverman and the campus a cappella groups, let us enjoy some of the music that Molly loved and share reflection about the consequence of her life on the life of this campus.
Good afternoon. I'm Peg Cornwell, and I'm honored to have this opportunity to speak about Molly. I hope you all had a chance to see the brilliant picture of Molly that's in the hallway. The picture was taken at graduation last year by our campus photographer, Matt Dillard. Molly's forefinger is wrapped around her chin, and she is gracefully holding her head up high. Her blue-green eyes, matched by the color of her bright nail polish, are focused, I'm sorry, not bright nail polish, um, and she is focused, are focused on the stage, and she appears deep in thought while watching attentively. It is a striking photo in any regard, and it holds special meaning for me because I was sitting in the bleachers right behind Matt Dillard when he took that picture. A couple days later, when it came out on the Worcester website, I immediately forwarded it on to Hannah, a friend of Molly's, and asked her to hand it, send it on to Molly. Molly was not somebody you could easily miss on campus. I first got to know her when, she and Grant, when Grant and I attended an a cappella concert on Friday night of Family Weekend years ago. We always loved to go to hear the new and returning groups because we love the music and the fun they create together. When for the second or third time, Molly came out on the stage to perform, I thought to myself, that young, young lady must really love to sing. And she is so recognizable with that gorgeous red hair and those bright green eyes. Later that year, I remember Molly when she came to the house, the president's house, to sing with the cowbells. She clearly loved being part of the group and got tremendous energy out of being in that environment. I got to know Molly a bit more when she decided to join Keys, the newest women's sorority on campus. The women in Keys, for whom I am the advisor, describe Molly as lighthearted and always upbeat, sassy and sweet, with an ability to make everybody feel good. They also describe her as focused and goal-oriented. When a bunch of the Keys women would get together for a study for a test, Molly was the one most focused on the test and not visibly otherwise occupied, though she was the one battling cancer. Molly was studying for that test, knowing full well that she was probably not going to graduate school or going on to work for a job after college. She was studying for the love of the material, for the friendship, for the collegiality of being together, for the love of learning. She was a role model for all of us, live every day, every moment to the fullest. Molly was a strong person, she had the strength to come back to school even when everyone knew she was the woman fighting cancer. That takes a lot of courage. One of the ways, one, on one of Molly's last visit to college, just before graduation, I saw her outside of Lowry. She raised her head, gave me a big smile, waved her hand and said, hi Peg, how are you? She made me feel great. Not that many students say hi to me so enthusiastically. <laughs> and yet yeah, Molly did. And right after she saw me, there was another student she greeted with equal joy. Students tell me Molly didn't focus on her cancer. Rather, she focused on being present and getting the most out of Worcester every day she was here. She knew what a gift it was to be here. Even in the days, even if the days were marked by illness, pain, sadness, there never seemed to be an outward sign of anything but bravery and kindness. Another way Molly is a role model for us. Molly joined Keys not because she was friends with all of the Keys members, but because she knew some of them, and she admired the values upon which Keys was founded, and that they were seeking to promote on campus. She even wrote a letter of support for the organization when they were trying to become a club, long before they were a sorority. Molly is a person of value and convictions, another trait we could all learn from and model. Whenever we lose someone from our community, it is a loss for all of us. It is a loss that we feel each in our own way. For me, I will always remember that hello and seeing Molly at graduation. I now know more about Molly through having asked her friends to share some remembrances with me. We will all continue to fan her flame with the sharing of collective experiences and individual conversations. Never be afraid to share a Molly moment with a friend. Chances are that friends are eager to share those with you. We will remember those special moments with her and carry them with us throughout our lives. Though we are all saddened by the loss of Molly, we are joyful forever for the experience of having walked the same campus path.
paths together. Um, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to share some of my Molly moments with you today. Um, <laughs> Um, it, is very, uh, it is hard to imagine a stronger first impression than Molly made on me. Uh, the first day of class last fall, the members of my seminar had to introduce and give a unique fact about themselves. And I still remember uh, not only what Molly said, but the spontaneous applause that her fellow classmates gave. And she said, hi, I'm Molly. I had cancer last year, but I'm back. I'm still alive. Molly was not one to hide behind her illness. She bended to her personality, strong, articulate, even outspoken, yet always considerate of others. Last spring, Molly was my teaching assistant, but I did not ask her to be my TA. I had never had one before and did not consider needing one in the spring semester. But Molly wanted the experience, and I think she also knew that I, could help, uh, cut, that I could use the help too. It was my second semester as a professor ever, and I was expecting baby at the same time. Molly offered to make copies, assist with grading, and just help me out in any way I needed. Honestly, I still didn't think that I really needed a TA, but Molly showed such initiative and was so persistent that she convinced me to take on. I was immediately very happy that I did. We thoroughly enjoyed discussing classroom activities, grading quizzes together, uh, and even pre preparing for exams. Perhaps most importantly, she flourished as a mentor to the freshmen and sophomores just starting out on the academic path of becoming a neuroscience major, just like Molly did years before. There are many attractive spots at the campus of the College of Worcester. But believe me, the path between Taylor and Morgan Halls is not one of them. It has lots of dumpsters and a long brick wall, um, so I never really enjoyed going there. But somehow, uh, for me, it will always be a special part of Worcester campus. Some of my fondest memories at the college involved the times that Molly and I walked down that path together. At the time, Molly was in my face perception seminar. And she was very interested in the course. Very often after class sessions, she stayed to talk with me. Sometimes she showed me, showed me articles and videos that she had found and which um, related to the class content. But sometimes we just talked about whatever else was on her mind. Regardless of the topic though, uh, I was often in a hurry to get uh, from class in Taylor to a meeting in Morgan. In many of these cases, Molly would just say, that's fine, I will just follow you. <laughs> and so it came to be that I often did not have to walk that path along Friedlander alone that semester. One time I asked Molly if she needed to be, to be in, Mal, uh, in Morgan too, and she said, no. <laughs> um, Molly just loved ideas and she loved connecting with people. Uh, and she loved that so much that a detour um, in the opposite direction of where she was going was really no inconvenience for her at all. But my happiest memory of Molly, however, is seeing her on the floor of my house, under the dinner table, crawling on her hands and knees. My two-year-old daughter, Emma, had just decided that this new babysitter needed to be put to the test. <laughs> and there was no better way of doing that than a game of chase. But Molly was in her element. All her lust for life came out in this experience that she got to play with a toddler who lived in the here and now, and more than anything else, just wanted to have fun. And that was Molly too. Molly's incredible energy, her fun-loving personality, her gift of connecting with others, her sense of joy, and her indomitable spirit immediately won Emma over, as I suspect they did just about everyone else who met Molly. For days after that first encounter, Emma kept asking for Molly. 
when is she coming back? Later, Molly told me how much she enjoyed hanging with Emma, as she called it, <laughs> because it gave her the chance to forget. That, however, is precisely the one thing. That is the one thing that no one here will ever be able to do. That is forgetting Molly.
going to close the musical um, portion of today's program with a, a poignant text set by Vaughn Williams that explores one's life, death, and the joy that awaits.
so friends, we have been blessed, comforted, and inspired by these members of our community. I am proud to be a member of a community that knows how to come together and how to care for one another. This is the beginning of a journey, but one that none of us will make alone. Special thanks to those students who are part of the planning team, to James May, Lauren Vanderbrock, Hannah Redding, and Caitlin Fries. I hope that you too are inspired to live differently, to strengthen your love of learning, to live every day. And so friends, gently rise, softly call good night, and joy be with you all. Please join us for the reception. Spend time with one another. Enjoy your memories. Be together. Thank you. <laughs>